Carp fishing is all about doing lots of little things right to stack the odds in your favour. However, sometimes one little mistake can actually completely ruin your chances of catching. So in this video, we're going to look at those things and how to amend them. The first common rig mistake that I used to always make was forgetting to check whether I'd balance my pop-up right before casting it out. Quite a few times I'd reel in the morning and go, why didn't I catch last night? And then realise the split shot that I pinched on underneath the pop-up was too small and my pop-up was sitting up like that, like a zig all night. Now funnily enough, fishing like that can actually be quite effective with a short zig rig you know a popped up bait directly off the lead but normally when there's a little bit of low lying weed and you're trying to keep your bait away from it in most cases when you're feeding pellets or boilies on the bottom you don't really want your pop-up hanging six to eight inches directly above it you want that split shot or bit of putty to pull your pop-up down and settle it down on the bottom just right if in doubt, have a little selection of split shot with you, have a little tub of putty just if you want to balance it perfectly and test your rig in the margins or in a little container full of water to make sure that that pop-up is sinking down slowly perfectly onto the bottom. One of the most important things with your carp rig is having a sharp hook. If that hook is blunt in any way, it's much, much less likely to go into a fish's mouth and stay there. Before I make a cast, I'll always test my hook against like the palm of my hand or against my nail, just to pull it and see, does that catch hold or does it sort of slide off because it's too blunt? These days, there's definitely been a trend towards hand sharpening your hooks to the point where they look like needles on the end or buying hooks like the Kamakura hooks. Now these super sharp hooks are amazing. If you're fishing for one bite in 24 hours and you need that absolute perfection in a hook. However, if you do the sort of fishing that I do on places like this where you're getting a few bites through the session, you're catching a few bream and tench, you're casting regularly, those incredibly sharp hooks can go blunt more easily. So you might end up catching a bream and having to change hook altogether, catching another one, change hook again. And you can end up sometimes wasting time and wasting money when you didn't need a hook that was quite that sharp. My favorites are just the wide gate hooks straight out the pack. They are reasonably priced and they work perfectly for me on most of the places that I fish. If the point does go over just a little bit, which they can sometimes do after you've landed a big fish or had a big battle with a carp, you can just use a hook sharpening file just to give it a couple of brushes down towards the point and bring that hook back to life. Check it before you cast out and you're good to go. When you're tying most rigs, there's an element towards the end of the process where you pass your line back through the eye and pull it down tight and the, the hook sits at an angle. Now it's quite easy to get this wrong when you're starting carp fishing and have the line coming out of the eye uh, in the wrong direction. What that means is, is if it's coming out the wrong side, the hook isn't so poised, ready to turn and hook into a fish's mouth. You'll notice if you sort of drag it across your hand or pull it against your finger, the hook kind of doesn't want to go in. It wants to flip over and go the wrong way. So make sure that the line is coming out of the eye towards the hook point. It will extend the hook shape a bit like a claw shape and just mean that you hook more fish when your rig's in the water. Ooh, we're in. Winter carp fishing. Hey, we got a carp. It's rewarding when you catch them in the winter. Hey. This mistake is one that I still make to this day and I have to keep reminding myself to avoid it. I've got some line here and I've got a lead just to uh, tie it to as a demonstration. Wetting your knots is so vital, and I'm gonna show you why. This is a seven turn blood knot, which is what I tie for pretty much all of my knots when I'm fishing, and I'm gonna moisten it like you're supposed to and pull the knot down slowly. There you go, look at that. I can pull that as hard as I like, it's 15 pound line, it will not break. However, I'm gonna do the same exact thing now, but I'm not gonna wet the line before I pull it down exactly the same knot and I'm not going to moisten it at all I'm going to pull it straight down it snapped so easily now if you imagine you had cast that into the lake you pulled it down a little bit slower you hadn't moistened it you cast it into the lake you could get a take and just 
snap up straight away. And that's the last thing that you want to do. So always moisten your knot before you pull it down tight and tease it into place gently before you then give it a really good test before casting out. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helped you and good luck with your carp fishing. Look at that, a nice winter reward there. Probably a 15, 16 pound common. Oh, that made me very happy. Oh, that cold water though, not so good.